Hi. Well, uh, this is a bit of a departure to the usual radios that I, I tend to collect, um, but it caught my as a, an interesting uh, receiver from a from a time gone by. Um, this was actually uh, manufactured in the early 1970s by Pioneer. It's the SX2500, and there was a, uh, a top-of-the-range unit um, marketed by, by Pioneer at that time, and it had a, quite a few interesting uh, ideas, fully solid state, of course. Um, the unit itself comprises of a, a very sophisticated receiving section and uh, quite a good uh, power amplifier assembly behind. Intended to be the prime mover for any turntable or, uh, or cassettes or reel-to-reel -reel units at the time. It's uh, a fully analog receiving system, uh, as you can see. Um, it's, uh, it's designed to have a number of inputs. Um, you can go from, from AM through to a, an FM mono, to FM stereo, and a phono auxiliary input 1 and auxiliary input 2. Primarily a, an FM stereo receiver, though. It, uh, it accomplishes it quite interestingly with a, uh, an auto-tune function, which is uh, something quite unique at the time. Bear in mind this is at the time when uh, RF receivers were all uh, analog and required a variable capacitor tuning assembly. Now, Pioneer had a, an interesting idea of using a motor drive inside their, uh, their system here to, instead of scanning using a conventional synthesizer, modern days, uh, in the old way, they actually drove the capacitor along with a, a DC motor. And uh, I'll just uh, give a bit of a demonstration. You can uh, move it across, and you'll see the needle actually has an indicator on it. So it'll automatically uh, mechanically move the meter and uh, stop on a, a station and lock onto it. And if it gets to the end, it auto reverses back and comes into the same state. It's a true discriminator. It uh, drives the motor both in a positive and negative direction. So it centers automatically on the uh, on the station. So this might bring in a bit closer just to, so you can see it. Here we are again looking at the, uh, the tuning arrangement which uh, is a nice backlit blue um, display which Pioneer sort of uh, had as their trademark at the time. Um, this particular receiver by the way is driving a couple of uh, smaller Wharfdale uh, Diamond 2 series uh, speakers that are just out of shot each side and gives remarkably good, uh, remarkably good audio. Anyway, I'll just uh, demonstrate from this aspect how the, the auto-tune moves across. And as we see, it'll automatically kick back. And you can see by the meters over here that the, uh, the, it will actually zero in on the, the correct signal and lock to the carrier all the way over. And even for its, its age, it has a number of features. It's got a, a flat bass setting treble, and uh, you can enhance or, or retard the bass as it comes in. Very nice sounding. Um, you have a, a tape monitoring facility, which allows you to measure before and after the heads if necessary, when it's, when it's set up with a uh, head. There's a, a loudness. As you can hear, it probably kicks in the, the bass a bit more there. Uh, and across here, we, there's even a, an MPX uh, filter mode, which is allowing you to cut out the noise often uh, associated with um, some of the analog MPX detectors of the time. And uh, you can actually switch off the auto-tuning function for stereo, and it will pick up any station, even if it's a stereo. And as mentioned, it was also uh, an AM solution. And you can tune across, and it locks onto the AM stations in the same fashion as it does onto the FM. You send them out, is that right? It's, it's, quite, it's quite impressive for its age to, to witness that, uh, that actually occurring. Anyway, I just thought I'd give you a quick view of the, uh, the unit. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention just out of shot here is a... Uh, 
is a sensitivity level here, which allows you to set the actual sensitivity for the signal. It's like a squelch in a sense, um, so it actually only locks to the stronger signal.